the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, the most sought after lens, $500 F4, $2,000 F2.8. You decide. Hi, my name is Frank White and welcome to another episode of Photography Tips and Reviews. In today's episode, I am going to talk about the Canon EF 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Now, the 70 to 200 millimeter lens is one of the most sought after lens that there is for photographers, um, primarily because it's such an awesome lens for so many different genres of photography. Um, some versions of the lens is uh, is really fast, so it made an excellent sports lens. Plus, with that, with that zoom factor up to 200 millimeter, then a lot of times, depending on the sport, you can get right there in on the action. Um, it makes a nice portrait lens because um, it covers those focal lens that really make portraiture flattering due to its, a, its ability to compress um, features. Now, that's not so much a, a characteristic of the lens as it is a characteristic of the focal length, but the lens does cover that focal length. And for other genres of photography, uh, like food photography, um, um, even landscape photography, because with landscape photography, you can make mountains or whatever you or whatever scene that you're trying to to take appear um, closer than they really are. Without further ado, let's get started. Canon's 70 to 200 millimeter lens comes in five different flavors. The apertures will stop down to two different sizes. The aperture will open up to L4, and this guy here is the 2.8, which means that the aperture, if this is L4, then 2.8 lets in twice the amount of light. So, so you can, so this, the 2.8 version gathers more light. Now, what else make this lens a little bit more expensive, or really a lot more expensive than this lens, is the image stabilization. Uh, this, the, the Mark II version is said, the Mark II version of the F 2.8 70 to 200 millimeter lens is said to be able to, to give you the ability to handhold your camera up to about um, four stops. So what that means is that if I can handhold this guy at one one hundredth of a second, then uh, if I half that, then I get one fiftieth of a second. That's one stop. And half one fiftieth, I get down to one twenty fifth of a second. Half that, then that get me down to roughly about one thirteenth of a second. And half of one thirteenth uh, is 6.5, uh, so that means that I can, uh, I, I ought to be able to handhold this at about one sixth of a second. So think about it, one one hundredth of a second, and I can handhold this one down to one sixth of a second. But uh, bear in mind that even with the image stabilization, really and truthfully, I would either have to be one real steady or safely, I would say one thirteenth of a second. So uh, that's in part, that is in part what made this lens so much more expensive. Now, in the Mark II version of the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, Canon did rework the, the, the optical formula. So this lens is said to be somewhat sharper than uh, than the previous versions of the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. But, you know, for most photographers, we won't be able to see the difference. Uh, in fact, um, that's what I'm going to test today. Um, I'm actually going to take a series of photos with the $2,000 lens, and I'm going to take 
that same series of photos with this $500 lens and see if there is any difference. Now, this lens new may be a little bit more than $500. Uh, I did not check. Um, maybe I put up a graphic to, to let you know what, it, what this lens costs at the time that I'm making this video. But I know that you can get it used for around $500. In fact, um, uh, I think I paid um, uh, substantially less than $500 for this one. Okay, so let's get started. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing around and find me a focus point on this chimney, chim, chimney here, okay? I found a focal point that I wanna use on both lenses and I'm gonna use the autofocus to actually get it into focus. Okay, so, so I've got my, my uh, since I'm using the tripod, then I've got my image stabilization off, but with this lens, I don't really have to turn off the image stabilization. Um, it, this lens is said to know that I've got, that it's on the tripod, so it's, it, it ought to be able to sense when it's really, really still, and it'll disable the image stabilization itself. Um, but it is off. I got the autofocus on, okay? And I got the stabilization on, my, on mode one, so that uh, helps to stabilize it on both, uh, ver on both the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, okay? Uh, mode two, incidentally, um, uh, stabilizes it only on the horizontal axis so that you can pan um, and it won't um, it won't affect the panning okay so so let's make some photos here now I'm gonna start at I'm gonna start with the the ISO set on 100 it's gonna be set on 100 for all of my pictures today and I'm using the camera meter. Uh, I want my aperture wide open. Uh, and I'm, I'm on the, for comparison, well, I do wanna make a, a, a photo, uh, uh, a series of photos wide open, but for comparison, I'm gonna use F4 and F8 on this lens uh, to compare the difference. Um, for the, on the aperture side and on the focal length, I am going to check um, 70 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and 200 millimeters, okay? So right now I'm putting the aperture wide open, f2.8, and I'm shooting 125th of a second. And I'm using, again, the camera meter to make that picture, okay? Change my focal length to 100. Make that picture. Change my focal length to 200. And make that picture. Okay, now I'm gonna change my aperture to F4. And by doing so, I should, I should pretty much have the same thing that I would have if I was using this lens. Okay, so I made F4. Uh, I got an app, a, a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second and 1 100th of a, uh, a focal length of 100 and now a focal length of 200. Okay, and then I'm going to go to F8 and back to 70, make the picture. One hundred focal length, one hundred millimeter focal length, and two hundred millimeter focal length. Okay, so uh, for right now, that's all I'm going to make with with the seventy, the two hundred, two point eight version, Mark II, and now I'm going to just change lenses and. 
Um, incidentally, the the tripod collar comes with the the 2.8 version, and you can buy it as a a accessory or as an option for the L4 version. But the L4 version is a heck of a lot lighter than the 2.8 version. So with the 2.8 version, I do feel like I have a lot more weight. I got the L4 uh, 70 to 200 millimeter lens mounted and using the same focal points. Um, let's see, it says I'm on bub, okay. So let me go to 70 millimeters on the focal length, ISO 100, and um, let's get this aperture down to F4. Okay, so I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second. And F and 100 millimeter on the focal length. And 200 millimeter on the focal length. Okay, so now let's move it to F8. Back to 70 millimeters on the focal length. And I am going to have to shoot at 1 8th of a second. And this is why I got the, the delay on because I knew that when I um, changed it, I would be shooting really slowly on this lens at F8. And also my light changed a little bit. Okay, so now we got a series of, of photos that we can compare the differences on. And we'll take it in Lightroom and see what we think about it. Okay, at this point I got both sets of images loaded up. Now I can tell um, just by looking that the light on the two images is significantly different. So that might play a really big role in showing the differences. Um, for instance, you can see that on the F, on the image on the left, which was taken by the L4 70 to 200 lens, the light is on the tree and the light is on the chimney on the image that was taken with the F, 2.8 lens, but let's um, zoom in to the L4 lens and take a look at it. Um, the images, the font, it looked really good. I get really good fine detail. And looking at the tree, um, which is which is lit, um, I'm getting some bokeh blur on that. But uh, so I actually can't use the tree in this comparison. Now, um, I am actually at f 2.8. Um, my aperture is wide open on the on the image on the right. Uh, but let's just go ahead and and zoom in on it and make it the primary uh, lens, and you can see how much how the image look wide open. Now this image is, is certainly usable, um, even wide open, but it's not quite as sharp uh, when it's stepped down to f2.8 as I would expect in an image that stepped down that's opened up the f4. So um, let's go back out and get an apple to apple image. Uh, so what I want is a, an image at 70 millimeters that was shot using the same settings. Now in all fairness I was using the I was using the camera meter 
to do the metering. So, so the only thing that I changed uh, was the shutter speed. And okay, so these two guys are roughly the same image. Um, so I'm at 70 millimeters on both images at roughly uh, somewhere between 100 and 125th of a second at f4. So let's examine the, let's zoom in and look at the details. Now, I can tell you I'm much more pleased with the, with the f4 image uh, right now. And let's do the same with another image. The 100 millimeter lens. Uh, uh, let's look at 100 millimeters for the L4. Um, okay, so uh, we are there on this image and 100 at L4. Okay, it looks like I'm still zoomed in. Let me zoom out and compare the detail. I am, um, to be honest with you, if I had to pick between the sharpest image, I, I, again, I, I would choose the um, the L4L, um, which is totally not what I expected. Uh, okay, so let's let's go to uh, to 200 millimeters and look and again. Uh, looking at the paint or uh, the texture, I can definitely see more texture with the L4, I think. Um, let's, let's try zooming in and comparing. Now, on this image, when I zoom in, I'm actually getting uh, much finer detail on the F2.8 lens than I am getting on the F4 lens. I'm not really going to make a definitive conclusion based on uh, these image images. Um, I think in all fairness, since they are inconsistent to what, since some of them were inconsistent to what I expected, then I think it would behoove me to, to shoot the images again at some point and put them back up. So look for a future video showing that information. Uh, at this point, let's go back to the park. So I hope I've been able to give you some really good information on the Canon EF70 to 200 millimeter, both the, the L4 L version and the 2.8 Mark II L version. If you have any questions or comments on what I just went over, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. I will check out the comments, uh, even if this video is a few years old. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment to do so. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I kind of use that as my barometer to tell how well I am uh, pre presenting this information. Now, if you are gonna shoot anybody today, shoot them with a cannon or a camera of your choice. And in the immortal words of Ansel Adams, great pictures are not taken, they are made.